You can go live now. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, everyone. Uh, My name is Harsh. I'm a member of the product management team here at DO, and I manage our droplets as well as uh, backend compute infrastructure products. Uh, Thank you so much for joining my talk. Uh, I'm here to talk about how to find the right VM for your business. And with this talk, I'm primarily speaking to either entrepreneurs that are just waiting the cloud computing waters or uh, any students that are great at application development but want to learn about how to optimize your performance as well as your costs when it comes to taking your applications to the cloud. Uh, I'll go through the right VMs to select, how to optimize your costs, and how to scale your business, and then uh, we'll wrap up. All right. Um, To get started, uh, let me first talk about what a virtual machine is. Uh, As you enter the cloud computing world, a lot of you will just get overwhelmed with a lot of the selective terminology that's out there. Um, And when you think of a VM, I just want you to think of a slice of a really powerful computer. That's all you're asking for when you ask for a new instance from a provider is asking to share uh, the capabilities of a server or a really powerful computer for a certain period of time. Uh, That being said, let's move a little bit into the kind of challenges you'll encounter when you are picking a VM. Uh, First is just choice. Uh, Any provider that you go to, you will see that there are tens if not hundreds of choices of VMs. Uh, You will come across all different hardware terminology that you'll have to go and understand yourself. Uh, And then after you figure out which one you need, uh, you'll have to figure out how to basically optimize your costs because you can figure out that this is the perfect VM for me, uh, but it can be a really expensive VM. So we'll uh, talk about how to keep your costs to a minimum while still optimizing for performance. Uh, And lastly, as a business, uh, you're hoping you can scale. Uh, We are hoping you can scale as well. So when you scale your business, you scale your application, how can your, not just your VM, but also uh, your infrastructure provider scale with you? Uh, What are the things that you should be looking out for? Uh, So where to start? When you just get started in cloud computing, uh, if you're just testing out something, uh, basic VMs are great. Uh, These are shared CPU virtual machines or general purpose virtual machines to try out a new cloud provider. But I wish this one size fits all approach could scale out, but it it does not. Uh, When you get to a more specialized application, you will need to think about the different parts of your application and how can you Uh, have a VM that's optimized for all of them. So for example, just like you would go to a doctor to figure out what's going wrong initially, but once something gets a little bit serious, they'll recommend you to a specialist. So this is why like when you are thinking of your VM, I don't want you to think of your complete business in one picture. I want you to think of it layer by layer to figure out what is the right VM for this layer or that layer. Um, In my example, I'm gonna take uh, an e-commerce store, which is a very common example that we see and try to give you some thoughts around what is it that you should be looking out for and uh, following that, what are the VMs that you will need? So if you have an e-commerce store, first and foremost, you are going to have a web server. Uh, You have products, you have customers that are gonna come to your website, you need something to serve up the products and uh, uh, interact with your website. For this, there's no real special need for going any specialized hardware route find something that's reliable and cost-effective and the VMs that you're gonna find typically are gonna be termed as either general purpose, balanced hardware uh, or basic VMs. But one thing to note over here is as you scale uh, your e-commerce site uh, or any website for that matter, the number of transactions you get on your website are gonna increase. And at that point in time, you might want to consider something that has NVMe drives. What that allows you to do is you can have a larger number of concurrent users on your website that are performing uh, multiple transactions at any given time, and your VM will be able to handle that. So just keep that in mind as you scale out like to potentially tens or hundreds of concurrent users. That's where uh, NVMe drives would be really valuable for you. Uh, second is uh, storing your customer and product info. So you have a website, customers are coming to it. They're potentially setting up their accounts. You have your products on there. Uh, 
your products have pictures, they have details, prices, and all of that. Uh, there's going to be a large amount of data that you will need to store regarding the products, regarding the customers. This one's easy to understand. You want something that has a high storage to CPU ratio because you don't really want any more CPU cycles or you don't want to spend more money on any RAM or CPUs. So find something that has a large amount of storage. Uh, one thing to note though, is if you have a database that you're setting up for your customers, your VMs will become very memory hungry. So that's where I'd advise looking at something that has a high memory to CPU ratio is when you're looking to set up a customer database uh, on your own. Uh, lastly, this is a more sophisticated application. Uh, you'll get to this point when you have large amounts of data that you are looking to process potentially on a weekly basis, on a monthly basis, run some analytics on it, uh, test and train this data. This is where all you're looking for is to perform the maximum number of calculations in parallel at the same amount of time. And this is where a really high performing CPU and even GPU options come into use because they have a large number of cores that can perform these calculations for you at the same amount of time. You will store this data somewhere else. You're picking this data up from somewhere else. All you're asking your VM to do in this case is uh, perform parallel calculations at the same amount of time. Uh, second is, how do you keep your costs to a minimum? Now, this by no means is a comprehensive list. These are just a few areas that I've identified, and I have a picture of a knob in here. So a knob that I see you can turn to keep your costs uh, high or low, and I'll talk about uh, them over here. First is, uh, think about your application and see, are you testing something, or is it going to be in production where customers are going to be interacting with it? If you're just testing it, uh, then all you will need is a, a shared uh, CPU VM because you don't really care about peak performance at that amount of time. You just want something to test out your idea, create, destroy, create, destroy, and something with shared CPUs work best for that. Uh, second is uh, how much traffic are you getting on your website? So you'll see that when you look at different kinds of instances, you'll come across memory instances, storage instances, CPU instances, you will have an option of two vCPUs, four, six, eight, like however much you want. How do you figure out how much, how many vCPUs do you need? Uh, I'd advise uh, using something like a loader.io to simulate traffic on your website on your, or on your application and where they can send a large number of concurrent users and allow you to test uh, your VM and see at what point are customers uh, timing out requests or is your VM really not able to handle traffic? So set realistic parameters, say that you have, you expect 50 users, but in a peak scenario, you expect hundred users. So test with hundred users, see if your two vCPU VM is right for that or if you need to go up to a four or, or an eight. Uh, third is self versus manage, it, especially when you're getting uh, started out. Uh, you can spend time on setting up your own database uh, or you know, trying to set up your own Kubernetes cluster, or you can let your infrastructure provider do that for you. Uh, it, it's something like time is a very valuable resource, especially when you are getting started and you don't have a dedicated database administrator that can keep updating your database as uh, a new version comes out or try to back it up. So my advice would be, Initially, it might seem a little bit more expensive than just a pure VM, but it's gonna save you a lot more time, which just in the end translates to a lot more dollars for you. Uh, last is hot versus cold storage. So this is something that where you might not even need a VM if you're not really accessing your data all that often. Uh, the analogy I like to use is I have certain amount of things on my desk and then I have things in my closet. Uh, things that are on my desk are things that I want access frequently, my pen, my notebook, or my coffee cup. Things that are in my closet, like a book bag or something else, like data that you're not accessing as often, think about maybe putting into colder storage. Uh, it's going to be cheaper for you. It takes a little bit more time for you to go and get that data. But if you don't really care about peak performance uh, or uh, any kind of timing in that case, then uh, that's something that you can still consider. Uh, the third issue that I've seen people come across is, great, you've selected the VM that you need, you have an application, uh, what happens as you scale? Hopefully your business grows 
uh, as, as you're putting more time and effort into it. So a few things that you should be thinking about when it comes to scalability is first, just the scalability of the VM itself. Is this something that you can give some extra CPU or memory boost to uh, by vertically scaling it up or, or not? Uh, the second thing is horizontal scalability. And this comes into play, uh, for example, if I have, going back to my e-commerce store example, if I have an e-commerce store with four product lines and I want to launch four more, or I just want redundancy, uh, can I actually create multiple copies of the same VM um, and uh, have uh, horizontal scalability like that? So that's something, again, to think about. Uh, the second thing is proximity. So you'll see that as your business grows, you'll start encountering users from areas that you may not have identified early on. Uh, for example, if I started a business based around New York, I might start seeing customers from Singapore. And these customers can still interact with my business, but uh, you can imagine the number of hops it would take for somebody interacting with your website that's based out of Singapore, where your VM is based out of New York. Uh, and this is where... Uh, the ability of uh, being able to create an instance that's closer to your customer, bringing that website closer to your customer becomes really important. So be where your users are and see if you can deploy your virtual machines in a data center that's close uh, to your end customer. Uh, lastly, I've been talking a lot about from a customer's perspective, but from your own team, uh, you might go from a one person operation to three, four, five people. Uh, how do you get all of them to work on the same project to interact with the same VM and, and deploy together? Um, and that's where you want to see if uh, your infrastructure provider has the ability to create projects, to create teams, to have multiple people work on the same instance at the same uh, time. Uh, so I'm going to be biased because I work at DO, but I, I think we truly thought of all these issues when we started building out the droplets. I'm going to save you the, the time for from going through each and every single point. The three things that I'll point to you are uh, how Dropbox solve these issues. First is scalability. Uh, we have customers that start from one or two droplets and go to thousands of droplets. So depending on your size, as you scale your business, uh, we are right there with you. And uh, that's just not in terms of the number of droplets, but also the kind of droplets that you have. So one vCPU, two vCPU shared, uh, dedicated, whatever you need, uh, we most likely have it. Uh, the second thing is customizable. So you saw the Mongo launch today. Uh, we have managed databases, managed Kubernetes, our app platform uh, that really takes away the time from you to spend uh, on your application development and less time worrying about your infrastructure. Uh, and then the last thing I'd say is our global footprint, uh, 14 data centers uh, that will help you get to where your customers are. Uh, wrapping up uh, the points that I made, firstly, when it comes to your choices, take a breather, uh, think about the different layers of your application and figure out what kind of uh, VMs would work best for each different layer. Uh, do not try to optimize at a higher level. You might be end up spending more trying to over-optimize, or you might actually get a performance hit, hit if you are not choosing the right, amount of, uh, right kind of VMs. Uh, the second, when it comes to keeping your costs low, I'd say think about uh, what you're using the VM for. Is it only for testing? Is it for production? Uh, is it the right size? Have you tested it with different sizes to see how much your VM can handle or not? Uh, Think about running some uh, form of uh, load testing to do that. And then the last thing was consider different storage options if you really don't need the uh, data to be stored locally on your actual server. Uh, lastly, when it comes to scaling your business, uh, think about not just scaling your actual VM, but also scaling in terms of your footprint, uh, where you are as uh, uh, you know, an application developer as a business uh, where VMs are and try to get close to your end customer. Uh, and then of course, uh, figure out ways, are there ways that your infrastructure provider can help you add uh, multiple users to your account, set up different projects so that it's a little bit more organized as you go from maybe one testing POC to an actual like a large business. Uh, so I try to squeeze a lot in 
in about 15, 20 minutes. Uh, again, this, is, this was not comprehensive at all. If you are looking for something a lot more comprehensive, I advise you to go to docs.digitalocean.com. Uh, really great people, really smart people that have put in documentation on whatever kind of technology you're working with, whatever kind of business that you have, we will most likely have examples of how to set up the right architecture for you. Uh, the second I'd advise is uh, if you have a preferred larger cloud provider, maybe get certified with them. All of them have courses that you can go through and uh, figure out what the right terminology for that cloud provider is and what the best practices for that cloud provider are and, and consider that. Uh, lastly, practice. Uh, almost every infrastructure provider at this point in time, I'd say, has credits that help you test out uh, their offerings. So if you want to consider a new kind of instance, if you want to consider a new kind of infrastructure provider, uh, look for these credits and see, can you deploy two or three kinds of instances, test them out with your application and see what kind of difference you get. Uh, as for me, uh, I am on LinkedIn and Twitter, of course, but I will be hanging out throughout the rest of the day with the rest of the cool kids uh, on our Discord channel. So please feel free to come to our speakers channel and I will be there to answer any questions. I will also uh, be taking questions right now that I, I know some of you have been submitting. So I think we can open up for questions now. Um, so I'll kind of go the one that I see first. Uh, as a solo junior developer, how can I decide which droplet to use for my first Droplet, I picked the cheapest one. So far, my site works fine because there are not many visitors. I'd say stick with it then. Uh, like, again, see the kind of traffic that comes on your website. Unless your customers really are complaining about it, uh, I, I don't see a reason for you to spend more. If you are, again, if you are actually looking to test with, you're expecting something will blow up because you're adding, you're partnering with someone or you're adding new functionality, uh, do some kind of a load test on your website. Uh, I mentioned this in, in my talk, but loader.io was a great website that, that we used to kind of simulate some traffic on a few droplets and see uh, what that means in terms of users. So check out your user experience from a third person's perspective and, and see uh, what that does. Uh, which VM or droplet is appropriate for an application that manages an image gallery? Uh, I'd say if you're not rendering images in real time, uh, which means the images are already stored and already there. Uh, you want something with a lot more storage because you're just essentially, uh, you have these images in your repository. Uh, you're, you're not trying to create these images in real time. If you're trying to create these images in real time, that's where I'd advise you go with something that's a more CPU intensive. But because you just have a gallery where you probably already have the images, uh, go with something with a lot more storage. So storage optimized droplet. Uh, does a single droplet have the storage and processing capacity? Uh, hard to answer that. It, it, it again, depends on uh, your uh, use case. Uh, I believe, very biased view, that even our smallest droplet is very capable for starting off with any kind of application uh, and then help you grow with it. Uh, Uh, if I, all right, let me take this. If I have an application that can run as a multi-tenant application, example, many companies in the same database or a single company with its own droplet, uh, is there an advantage cost-wise putting all company in one database as against having a droplet per company? Uh, cost-wise, the one thing that I think about over here is your own time. Uh, the more things that you have to manage, the more time you have to spend. All right. Uh, I will take a lot more questions on our Discord channel, so please find me there, and thank you so much for your time uh, today.